Hi there beautiful creatures, welcome back. It's good to be back! First of all, let me just say that because it's been so long. I have not, well, I mean it feels like so long. I have not been on the YouTube for ages and a day because, let's face it, real life has gotten in the way. I am pretty much right in the thick of my mid-year reviews and all that kind of stuff and it's been really hectic lately as life tends to get if you attend university and you have mid-year reviews. Um, I also have a massive amount of writing to submit for those mid-year reviews as well as countless other things that I have been doing. So um, I've kind of put YouTube a bit on the back burner. I didn't want to, I was going to mention it in my previous video but I actually edited those bits out because I thought no I can do everything. I can't. I'm human. Um, last week and the week before, I've actually been sick for about two weeks, uh, kind of consecutively. I had some sort of mysterious chest infection because I had a flu and I didn't treat that or whatever and it just progressed into a chest infection to the point where last week I couldn't do much but I still had to do stuff because, you know, stuff needs to get done. So, yes, here I am. I'm back in all my glory and I have this fabulous haircut courtesy of my wonderful boyfriend Rob who as you know by now if you watch this channel is a hairdresser. A more perfect match could not have been made. So this video is going to be a book review and discussion of two books I've recently finished reading, one of them not so long ago and the other one as recently as two days ago. So I'm going to start with the first book because I have I hope I have a lot to say about this book to convey how important it was to me. This book is called Dead Boys and it is by Gabriel Squalia. Um, this is his first book and it is phenomenal. It is really funny uh, in a strange offbeat black humour type of way. It basically, um, it's basically a story about the afterlife but the afterlife as told by the skeletons that inhabit the afterlife. So when you die, you go down the river Leth and or Lethe, and you start to decompose. But some skeletons within this society want to preserve their sort of fleshy remains and dry themselves out and like taxidermy themselves. And some skeletons who have just kind of like totally lost the plot let themselves decompose and they're only just like bones held together. Anyway, it follows the story of these, you know, dead boys. Um, one of them is quite adventurous and wants to find this place and wants to figure out his place in the underworld and can he actually, you know, there's this whole myth about the living man and is there, was there a living man in the underworld? How did he get here and how can the dead potentially go up and visit the living? But it's more than that. It's kind of a, it's a bit of a story about enlightenment as well. Uh, at the end of it, it's a really kind of complex tale but told in a very very good way. It sort of almost has that very English dandy prose to it. Um, they kind of converse in sort of a 19th century way, which if you know me, you know my love of the romantic and the gothic um, in literature, then you will probably love the way this book is written if you also love those genres, by the way. Um, I just fell in love with the way it was written. It was one of those books that Although I really enjoyed the story, I didn't feel like I had to rush to get to the end. I just wanted to kind of take my time and just enjoy the journey that these characters were going on. Because another really important part of this book is actually time. They talk about time, like eternity. Um, you know, the only way that, because uh, there is no setting sun in the underworld, the only way they can tell time is by watches. And who keeps the watches? It's the kind of elite in society and uh, their sort of money and bartering system is time, you know, uh, which I found really interesting. So sorry, my phone just has a low battery warning. Anyway, so that's Dead Boys and I definitely recommend it if you love strange tales, um, tales about if you're, if you're not squeamish about bones and dead things and, you know, people taxidermying themselves, which is a fascinating idea. Um, from the get-go, then I definitely recommend this book for you, and it is a fucking spectacular first novel for someone to publish. Uh, so I'm definitely on the lookout for more stuff by this author. 
and uh, I definitely recommend this. So that's Dead Boys. And it always makes me think of the Antique Anatomy Tarot now. So every time I use that tarot, I have this book in my mind and vice versa when I found out about the tarot while I was reading this book. The second book has taken me, hold on, I got this in the Christmas of one year, 2014 I think. So it's taken me two years to read. And it is 77 Shadow Street by Dean Koontz. I've read a lot of Dean Koontz books. Um, I love thriller, horror, kind of sci-fi books. So Dean Koontz is great. Um, the first couple of Brother Odd books were really great, but then the others kind of not so much, I found at least. But I've read other stuff of his, and he's really good at building suspense. Um, but this book, it took me two years to read because I read the first couple hundred pages and I was terrified. I could only read this book during the daytime. I was so freaking horrified and terrified of this book. It just creeped me out so much when I started reading it that I just couldn't read it. Um, obviously I was maybe not in the right frame of mind to approach a book like this. Um, and then it definitely twists. It has a massive twist and things are really not as you think they are. Which is amazing, which is a great thing. Dean Koontz is amazing at twists in books. Um, it says here, like, are you brave enough to enter? And I was like, after 100 pages, I was like, nope, 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 I'm done, I'm done. Uh, part of that is also, I think, my fear of haunted houses, full stop. Uh, I'm very intrigued by them, but I'm also very wary of them. And uh, when you talk about shit about haunted houses and like disembodied voices and whatever, like who hasn't heard their name called out to them in the middle of the night when nobody's awake or like when they're totally alone? Like everybody's experienced stuff like that. So um, yeah, I have a thing with like disembodied voices that have like the way that these writers write about them. I'm thinking of like Stephen King, Dean Koontz, um, is like, oh, it's just so visceral it's so like you can hear that voice speaking to you and I don't like that kind of shit like that yeah that creeped me out so even though I was reading it during the daytime and like trying to be really good about it um I just got sucked into the story and I just got totally horrified so uh it's really really interesting it is really interesting and I definitely recommend it I'm sure other people that you know it's not a very long book it's about 400 and something pages so other people that are not so easily disturbed by haunted houses will probably really enjoy this book if they enjoy the way Dean Koontz writes. But I also found this a little bit closer um, in terms of the way he describes some sort of monsters and strange experiences um, as, like, like I said, very visceral. So it kind of calls to mind Clive Barker's books. So if you like Clive Barker, you'll probably like this book because he describes his strange, weird and nightmarish things uh, in a very a bodily a bodily way like a very you know you kind of cringe because you can you know he describes like sinuous sinuous forms and like undulating things you know um although Clive Barker is one of my favorite novelists oh my god um yeah I won't go into that so these are the two books that I have just finished reading um I have also been reading the book Purity by Jonathan Franzen on my Kobo reader as well as on well I've kind of finished Bulk and Witchcraft but I'm kind of still in the process of digesting it at the moment but Purity by Jonathan Franzen is a fucking fantastic book oh my god I actually got a chance to meet the author recently when he was in Sydney for the Writers Festival um, and he signed I bought another book by him called Freedom and he signed that one for me and I said to him he described that feeling of when you enter a fever when you read a book but he was talking about it in a negative sense where he was in a bit of depression isolation and um, reading this particular book he it just threw him further into that into that fever and like he started doing things the character was doing writing the the way the character was writing and I told him that um, his book threw me into a similar fever but in a positive sense like I just couldn't put it down because the characters the world was just so immersive the politics everything was just so relevant to contemporary times that it's been an incredible book but it's very long and I often read it at night before I go to sleep and I end up going to sleep at like half past midnight because I just get hooked 
Um, yeah, Kobo is also, it brings out my competitive side because it tells me how much percentage I've read of a chapter or how much percentage I have left to go of a book and I just immediately feel like I want to challenge it and just be like, no, fuck you, I can get to 80% before this time and just like speed read. I don't know if anyone else has that with Kobo, but I definitely <laughs> have been feeling that competitive side with Kobo, like, oh, I gotta put more books on my red list. Um, I don't feel like that with, you know, hands held, hands held, ha hand hold books. No, with uh, practical physical books, but I do with Kobo books. I don't have any deck reviews or any deck things going on because my spiritual life is, um, is swept up, you know, with my, with my kind of real life, I guess. It's not really, you know, I haven't got anything exciting to share in terms of revelations or new decks or anything like that, really. Um, I have, you know, I've supported a bunch of Kickstarter decks, so I'm hoping that some of those will get delivered, um, within the next couple of months, but yeah, I don't really have anything on that front to contribute to the community at the moment. But I'm hoping to do some more book reviews. Um, I really I have a massive, massive stack of spiritual books that I want to, you know, finish reading. So I've got Vulcan Witchcraft, which I'm close to finishing. Then I, you know, I've got quite a few other books that I want to work on. I've been working a lot with, still with dream work, always with dream work, um, and very closely with Artemis and my Kurea Magician's deck as well as my Antique Anatomy and Oracle of Oddities when I have been working with stuff. Um, and kind of just taking a break from it all because I've got too much real world stuff going on. I've got too much earthly shit happening to really focus on my spiritual life at the moment. Which is okay. It's just how it happens. Um, so I don't really know when I'll see you guys in the next video because, like I said, this two weeks are really nuts. Um, but I will see you again in another video. Until next time, bye guys.